we have been talking about the health situation in fact even the stories today is about the rural hospitals association the rural private hospitals association saying guys nhif owes us a lot of money <laughs> we are no longer now going to allow um, to accept nhif cards in our mm. facilities mm. 400 hospitals in across the country <coughs> in all these counties in 43 counties saying we can't take nhif anymore that is one side on the other side doctors are threatening to go on strike they issued a strike notice and it's all because of interns and we want to understand what is this issue about interns that's why we've, we we have invited the deputy secretary general of the kenyan medical practitioners and dentists union dr dennis miskela he's in the studio dr Terry, good morning good morning Eric. welcome to the hot seat of the situation room thank you for having me karibu sana we want to understand the genesis of the current issue that you have with the government and what measures you've taken but to welcome you to the conversation let's first hear from this man called city muga city muga has the day's proverb this week the proverbs are from the republic of seychelles yeah okay yes you you were to tell us the president and all those things yes i am going to do precisely that the president of the seychelles is called is the original wavel w-a-v-e-l but means mm -hmm. pronounced wavel mm -hmm. okay and his second name hey. is ram kalawan Ah, that's a nice one. That's his name. His VP is called Ahmed Afif. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this country has just around 100,000 plus people. Mm. It's not actually that many. So, a country like this with 100,000 plus people, does it have a capital city and other cities? It has a capital city. The capital city is actually... a commercial city and other yeah, city. Yeah. Mahe. There's Mahe. Cap <laughs> uh, that's commercial. Capital uh -huh. is Victoria. Mm. Mm. It has two. Yes. Uh -huh. Like every other country. So, one... Don't 20, dismiss them because of 20 people, people. 20 people, people are in the capital. Cities. Yes, they are two big cities. 20 people in the capital city. And then the other uh, 60 th people are in the three in the other one. <laughs> 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 How far apart are they? It's no. one of the smallest countries in Africa. Yeah. How far apart are these cities? This, it's like this Nairobi is and Ruiru. This, this is the one. The, no, no, no. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Nairobi and Ruiru, you'll, you'll probably be in Mombasa. No, what I'm saying, anyway. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The interesting thing is the. One speaks three languages. Um, mm. English is spoken, mm -hmm. French is spoken, mm -hmm. and Seychellois. Mm -hmm. Okay? Seychellois? Seychellois. Yes, Creole. There, there's a language they speak. Mm -hmm. It's akin to French, but uh, it's like uh, pidgin, which people speak in a country. Akin to where, English. Yeah, uh, akin to English. Some people who are close to us and whom we know <laughs> speak. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Okay, the proverb. He who is scared of words has no heart for deeds. He who is scared of words has no heart for deeds. Daktari, how would you interpret this proverb? I think uh, I'd interpret it in that uh, somebody who does not uh, want to be told something would not really be keen on following up on whatever is been told to follow up. <laughs> <laughs> For example, in our case, the ministry they want to hear the issue I think. So I don't think they're really keen on doing anything that we are asking them of or whatever they are promising to do. Mm. So I think that uh, yeah, kusema na kutenda. Well, the proverb had a life situation. <laughs> <laughs> there it is today. <laughs> <laughs> <My goodness. laughs> ah yeah. <laughs> this strike notice that you issued, mm -hmm. when uh, does the strike go live? The strike notice expires on Wednesday night. So that on... Uh, Tomorrow? Yes. So that on Thursday from midnight, there will be a health crisis because doctors will be joining government in the strike. I say joining government because <laughs> it's the government on strike. In our strike notice, everything we have put out are things in policy, are things that government has undertaken in their schemes of service, in HR guidelines to do, in the CBA to do, and they have not done. So is the government on strike. KMPD is just joining them. Because also if you look at where the issues all began, they began seven years ago when uh, we had the 2017 strike 100 days and uh, we had a collective labor gained agreement that was signed and deposited in court as a court order. That was never implemented completely. In 2021, we took government to court for an implementation of the court order. Mm -hmm. And uh, the court told them that, go ahead and implement this is a court order. They did not implement it. Then come 2022, 
I remember us told us to call for a strike, mm. which we did call for a strike. And that December, the Minister of Health, CS Nakumisha, and uh, Sakaja, who is the Chair of Labor and Social Protection in the COG and others, met us and gave us a promise. And on 6th of January last year, they put a matrix on implementation of the issues we raised. And the only thing I did last year was to attend those meetings. When we began to the full house, but it kept on dwindling and dwindling with every meeting. Mm. So that by the time we were finishing end of the year last year, we were only three people left. But worst of all, that even that mediation, there was never a report out of it. We gave a, a, a strike notice now, the report came out yesterday, finally. <laughs> yeah? So there was completely no reason at all. And what also triggered now this situation was that the interns, the clear internship policy developed by the ministry that every year the number of medical interns who come out 1000 approximately they should be posted 30 days after graduation because these are people who have done seven years in medical school they have graduated the only thing they don't have is a license to practice without supervision so they work yes but they're answerable to the supervisors who are medical officers and consultants so when you don't allow them to go for the mandatory internship, they can't lock them, they can't do anything privately, let's, 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 they can't let's, go abroad. Let's start there. Take us through this whole concept of internship. Start from, you have been admitted to university to go and study medicine. Take us through that. Uh, let me start better. Okay. I'll start that you have been in, I've been in nursery school. You've been in primary. <laughs> and I've been told, work hard, yeah. be disciplined. Mm. And you go to a good high school. Mm. You work hard, be disciplined, go to secondary school. Mm -hmm. You go to high school. You're the most disciplined child as school captain, mm. working hard. You're told if you work hard, you achieve anything. You read Ben Carson and his books, think big and all that stuff, get motivated. <laughs> then you finally pass and get an airplane. Mm. And we carry you on the shoulders in the villages and the media. What do you want to be? An English <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> so this child believes that finally hard work does pay. Yes. Then you attend medical school. Seven years of grueling work mm. in between the rapid with the strikes for lecturers and every other thing, you take eight years. Mm. Eight you, years, yes, in university, yes, yes. Okay, in all this, time, the only thing you're learning is how to be a doctor. You work, you study all the time, there's nothing else they're teaching you. Then you finally graduate as a 27 year old. All your other colleagues graduated in other courses, and li lives are moving on four years earlier, yes. Mm. Some of them are even married with children and all that. <laughs> you're 28, then uh, you're being told, now wait, we want to post you for internship, which is compulsory. So you go to the medical council and you spin a wheel and randomly select where you're being posted across the nation. To a government facility? Yes, and some private. Okay. So you, have, you can't say that I want to stay, go near home so that I can operate from my mother's house. No. Mm. You can be from Kakamega and you end up in Lamu because Kenyans are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you don't determine where you you're don't posted. determine. So you have no luxury of choosing a convenient spot. Okay. Then you sit now, the waiting game starts now. Nobody's explaining to you from June last year when you're ever going to get posted. What do you mean? Yeah, nobody's telling you because nobody knows. Okay, but Atari, on, you spun a wheel. You, are in you, you spun a wheel. wheel. You went to Lamu. You, 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 you have been to told oh, you are you're going to be posted oh. as an intern in Lamu. So your names are given to the ministry by medical council that these 1,000 interns are ready for posting and they're going to these centers according to the wheel they spun. Okay. The ball they call it balloting. Okay. Now the ministry sits. No. There's mm -hmm. nothing. Tell, don't communicate. Tells you nothing. Yes. Other people are also graduating from the universities, catching up with you. Those who went abroad are coming, catching up with you. Then finally, January comes, then we ask the interns come to us as the union that, what's going on? There's a policy on our posting. There's a CBA on when we should be posted. Can I ask what are they doing in this one year? They're just basically, it's kind of They're like home. Hold, stepping on the gas, holding Because you can't something. practice. You can't do you anything. Practice. Yes. So you're staying home. Mm. You're doing nothing completely because you don't have a license, so you can't do nothing. In those eight years in medical school, you have learned no other thing. You're 17 when you joined, or 18. You have no other skill except just to stay home. And somebody generally tells you that, wait, we'll post you in February. In February, this early February, they say, yes, by February you get posted. So what do you do? You start looking for houses mm. wherever you have been posted mm. for accommodation. So you go wherever, look for a house, pay a deposit, take a loan telling your friend that I'll pay you end of April. Because I'll earn. Because now there's a plan. The, even the short-term gigs that you could have gotten in a front office or whatever, you say, no, 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 I won't be available because my internship is starting in February. 
end of February, February and my journey March. to becoming a doctor will yes now you find yourself February has ended and there's no posting and there's nothing instead someone tells you that oh this is not affordable I'll change the law instead you have to stay wait for July as we look for money to finally post you in the meantime I might have to change the law to make you affordable so everything else is flipped that's what the interns have found themselves in. Yet we know. So right now, this person who is was the A student, mm -hmm. my classmate that got an mm -hmm. A, right? Yes. Went to study medicine. Mm -hmm. Took eight years. Mm -hmm. The rest of us graduated after four. Yes. Left mm -hmm. the chap. Yes. Finished seventh year, oh, eight years. Mm -hmm. Has graduated, flipped the hat. Mm -hmm. Is a doctor, but he's not a registered doctor. Yes. Cannot practice. Cannot. Cannot even open like a clinic there in uh, Shags. When you become desperate, you can illegally operate. But you're going to be killing Kenyans because you don't have the knowledge, this purpose knowledge. And if you're caught, it's a five million shilling fine or jail. Mm. So you're tied. You cannot practice. You cannot practice. The <clears throat> only thing that you've trained to do. Yes. The only way you can practice is after you go for this mandatory one year yeah. internship yeah. working under the supervision of a registered doctor yes mm. sorry doctor Ray. Okay. i just want to clarify something here so that we understand this process mm -hmm. through which after you have graduated from university mm -hmm. after the seven years or now with whatever eight years mm -hmm. the process through which you must then go and serve as an intern to then finish later mm -hmm. has been has been designed and crafted with the ministry of health in full knowledge yes it's actually it's an act of parliament on how the doctors the nurses and clinical officers must undergo that because you interact with patients mm -hmm. yeah so it is in law the process of how to get that license the ministry is aware and they have put the policy on yes. the internship mm -hmm. the tail is a fixed 12 month period yes there's no annual leave and when you fall sick or as a lady you get pregnant when you take your maternity off nobody will extend for you yes. you'll have to work for free for the moment to cover for the days you fell sick or for the days you fell pregnant right. i've lost intern women who you're pregnant and you want to work up the last day because you want to have extra mm. Mm. and this young lady just collapsed in theater and died being a yes for another pregnant lady so their plight is so dire they can do 48 hours non-stop back to back as a doctor from 2012 i've done my master's training there's no period i found more challenging than the internship period okay mm. so they are aware of this process because they were in the they were in the process of instituting it yes okay yes so when the interns have sat up because like now the current cohort that we are dealing with today mm -hmm. has essentially been out of active anything for a year <coughs> isn't it yes since they've gotten their posting to wherever they've gotten their posting notification yes okay yes. but they have not reported yes. because ministry is saying wait we'll come back we'll come back what's the reason that the ministry is giving that you can actually see that maybe would make some sense as to why these interns then have not been called to their post of duty i think it's just sharing competence for lack of a better word why does it so because mm. in the ministry of health budget there's a budget on internship the budget for training for paying school fees for the specialists who are in training mm. but every year before budget is read there's a process of making the budget mm. and at one point the, the government meets itself the treasury which is also part of government in mombasa and everybody defends their line ministry they said in healthcare mm. we are putting 150 billion decide why can he should get 20 and not 23 mm -hmm. and why this 3 billion will go somewhere else mm. so you all defend the budget and the budget lines the minister of health just did not defend that budget line on internship and training so when trisha goes back they're like what are we knocking off because you have to, have to pay china their money we struck off some of those budget lines so there's right now we find ourselves in a place where there's no budget line for internship wait and for paying minute. school fees yes wait a minute wait a minute yes yes which budget the supplementary budget or the initial budget the main budget line did not have the issue and the supplementary budget even struck off now the training yeah. So when so the, the budget for 2023-2024 yes. that was passed by parliament, yes. assented to by the president, yes. did not have money allocated for paying interns. Yes, neither for tra training. And purposes. even for training yes. those who are going for their masters and all. Yes. 
and did not have it. And that's why when the Ministry of Health said that they, they normally hide, they post them, then they tell them to wait for three, four months, then when July comes, they pay them in arrears. But now the head of public service gave a circular that do not commit government to debts or don't commit to expenses when you don't have cash at hand. Mm. That's what I now call this all quagmire. Now they are being told that you cannot even post the interns, you cannot even give commitment to the schools for school fees of the master's students because you didn't ask for the money, there's no budget allocated for it. Why did they not ask for the money? Because they're incompetent. They could have gone and no, defeated the budget line. They can't be. <laughs> That's what they do. Every the the like only new people in this ministry are the CS and the PSS. Everybody else has been there before. You know, Daktari, Eric, there are, there are very the, people who, the technical people who work on this paper, it's not the CS at Inakumicha who sits every night and at Isa Saini 12, 12 no. plus 5. But do you, think, no. do you think that by accident that we have had interns going for the last 60 years, posted every other year? This is the first minister And then post suddenly interns. this time there's no. Then this time round, all of a sudden, there are no interns. Somebody must have intentionally failed that. Because also I know that there have been conversations around the interns' pay. But, hmm. We could have it. So what about if we don't post them and we have a backlog? Then finally they become so desperate that some of them will consider doing the internship for free because you just want your license and go. Then before you know it, the internship period is not paid for. Maybe that's what they could be pushing towards, driving the members to be desperate enough to at one point consider. So we can reopen doing it this for CBA. Free. Yes. And then you yes, know, to renegotiate again. Because I've seen to letters. Deal with the reality. I've seen letters to that effect. I see. You get that? Yeah, no, the most tragic thing around it that twenty seven percent of our healthcare workforce in this country are interns. Kenya is grappling with a serious shortage of healthcare workers. For example, the nurses. WHO says that 25 nurses should see 10,000 Kenyans. We have only 8 nurses seeing that number. And what does it translate to? When you have a sick patient somewhere in Jotiarech in Kisumu, then you'll be told, stay behind and feed your patient, stay behind and wash your patient, stay behind and give your patient drugs. Because so two nurses are not going to entire, run an entire world of 70. Yeah. Mother's giving birth. Mm. Or when you're told that you should have tw doctors in 1 to 1,000 ratio. And you have 17,000, 1 to 17,000. What does it mean? Every day when you go to that hospital, you are going to choose as a mother on this child who falls sick at night. Will I go for my daily wages as a mama four? Mm -hmm. Or will I spend the whole day queuing in Kenyatta? Because you know that the moment you go, you'll have loved to lose one. So you choose to go for your wages. You come back, this baby has diarrhea and dehydrated and died when you're away. Or when you're told as a man that you have this kind of a surgical procedure. But the queue is three months ahead. So you have this com thing complicating. But the theater space is full because you have one surgeon running an entire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or when you have hundred oncologists, cancer doctors, serving 55 million Kenyans. One to 500,000. What does it mean? That yes, you have told me I have cancer. You know, maybe I have cervical cancer. But for me to access a doctor, I will see this doctor in two, three months as the cancer gets worse and my mind goes crazy. I have this disease and there's no doctor, no nothing going on. Those are the realities that Kenyans have to live with every day because of a broken healthcare system. And in all these big mess, the person who has to pay that ultimate price is a doctor who has to see 200 patients in a shift, who has to see mothers dying from preventable disease to that nurse being blamed for killing a mother giving birth. Yet they all know that the only two nurses in Mama Lucy when for women are in labor. What do you want me to do? To add to the issue around delayed salaries, landlords knocking your door on you, third party deductions being taken away from you, KRA, Unakatwa PAE, they don't remit. They take away your loan, they don't remit your CRB. They take the policies for your child insurance, they don't remit policy elapses. When you give us strike notice, no, 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 it's a calling. Don't strike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a career, not a calling, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are laughing because what you've just said there was, was funny at the end. But it's a serious <laughs> it's a matter, this one. <laughs> Dr. Dennis Miskella is the Deputy Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union. The doctors have issued a strike notice. It expires tomorrow night. So from midnight, Thursday morning, doctors will go on strike and we're getting to understand why because there are a thousand plus interns who are waiting to be posted to health facilities they haven't the ministry onge pesa
<laughs> so you see those children that we celebrate we hoist up in the sky and we say yeah 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 this passed very well and we ask them so what would you like to become and they say i'd like to become a neurosurgeon i'd like to become an oncologist i'd like to become these are the other all doctors go to university study seven years graduate given the power to read but you cannot start reading as a doctor you have to go and serve one year internship that's mandatory for you then to be registered as a doctor by the dentist council the doctor's council but now this internship which is mandatory that's where the problem is because the government has not posted interns for how long now for the last eight months now the last eight months they those are graduated i've just been waiting for nine months for this is almost the year that they should be taking to do the internship so that then they can be registered as doctors so they can now start working as doctors this hasn't happened and this is causing a serious issue because we have a backlog we have more doctors no more new trainees who are graduating not being posted 27% of health workforce in this country is these interns so doctors are now saying we are going on strike come thursday morning mm. So the, I think the question here is, one would assume that for every cause there is an effect, or for every action that there is a reason, or in this case, for any kind of inaction, there is also a reason. <laughs> You've mentioned it maybe quickly, but then the guardian of this entire process is the Ministry of Health. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what are the reasons that we're being given as to why this is not happening? Now, mind you, and, I, and of course I shouldn't be saying that, but because you know. This intern issue is one of the issues that's on the table right now that needs to be dealt with. And it would appear as though resources are at the, <laughs> at the end of all of these conversations. Mm -hmm. But what is the reason that the Ministry of Health is giving as to why these things have not been done? Why the CBA has not been upheld in its entirety? What's the reason? Yeah, of course, your guests are good at mind that they talk about resources and lack of it. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I think it's just a lack of prioritization. Why do I say so? Because when we devolved healthcare in 2010, there were certain issues that should have been done, like unbundling the cost of care that the counties are going to take. But when the authority, the authority tried to tell the governors to allow you to take time to unbundle this, the governors blackmailed President Uhuru, former president, that is against the evolution. So the president told them, okay, take it. So health was then devolved in a way that was not making sense. And as a union, we have already said that, come on, something is wrong with this. Let's talk about the Health Service Commission. We said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. These are just teething problems. We'll fix it. 14 years later, this teenager is still teething. <laughs> Worst of all, <laughs> Worst of all is that Healthcare is 90% devolved, <laughs> yet 65% of the budget in healthcare remains in MOH. Mm. MOH has 143 billion in its current budget. And only function they are supposed to do is policy and training. Mm. And yet they have the bulk of them. That's all, yes. Mm. Policy and training. Policy that they make and they don't follow, training that they don't do. <laughs> so you wonder then what else are they doing, apart from attending meetings and seminars and launching things. And then when you ask them, they tell you, no, 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 talk to the counties, you are devolved. When you go to the county, they tell you, no, 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 the money is at MOH. And things have become so bad that the government right now has this story about UHC, which has, of course, failed twice before. This is another third attempt, yeah? They forget that USC has the four components. You have the financing of the healthcare system, the medicines, the technology, and the human resource. And WG then adds a fifth one about leadership and governance. Well, somebody then controls and organizes this entire infrastructure. Mm. They have done everything in reforming cancer. They have done everything in building hospitals all over the place and buying ambulances. They did everything in MES projects and building, buying all these machines. The only thing they have refused to do is have a sit down on human resources for healthcare. Why do you think that is? I don't understand it because it's been, we have been singing this song for a very long time. The, the Health Service Commission, in terms of a suggestion as to how this would be taken care of, has been suggested year after year after year. And it would appear as though anybody who heard about such a thing would be say, oh, very gladly. Take away that component from us and you deal with it. Why is it such an issue? You know, the biggest issue that we live in a country of very dishonest men and women. 
the conversation around health service commission is something that even on the bbi it was there but governors always refused to let go because they told him that health is devolved but these guys are calling you because for the three billion four million they give you 80 percent goes to payment of salaries yep so they don't help you so can you give them this heavy burden of the hr the kind of that skunk then you build those stores and buy drugs and do all your stuff you mm. know and they refused so for the longest time i just wondered that why would you accept to carry this big burden mm. but i discovered that in the last year when we're now going through the mediation and part of the mediation process was issued around the basic salary component in the 2017 cba that is not implemented mm -hmm. so the county were told can you bring the payroll and show us that you implemented the basic salary the data was full of ghost workers <laughs> ghost now we doctors could, yes and nurses yes but we need the doctors now because they are analyzing for my members. Mm. Then we said, no, no, no. Let's go to the IPPD in Nairobi because every month they have to do returns on stuff. So the COB, because your budget can then allocate the salaries. IPPD also was full of ghost workers. Now it me, ha. Huh? So a county can say that I have 50 doctors. While on the ground, he only has 20 doctors. The other 30 are salaries just being taken by ghosts. We call them Nyawawa. You know? <laughs> that's the biggest challenge that's why they are never going to allow the pe the 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 the, 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 the hr function the hr yes. function because teachers have a commission yes. police have a commission you yes. have a commission everybody else so they need to have a centralized way of running healthcare except in the counties actually it's akin to now telling a county to run a university to manage professors and all those things. Because yeah. ECDs are very well. They have built very beautiful ECDs. We've challenged them. Why can't you then run dispensaries, community health promoters, and other health centers? Then let the complicated referral system be managed. I took a practical solution mm. in Kisumu County. 86% mm. of their budget goes to pink salaries. And they are flagged by the other day by the auditor. 86%? Yes. They're not following the PFA Act of the 30-70 of the yep. rule on development. Mm. If Kisumu County surrendered JTRH, Russia, to national government at a level of 6, that 86% would drop to 29%. Just with that one act? Just that one act. So we've challenged them that let the labor intensive bit of it then focus on the preventive primary health care it will make a lot of sense that way but it's like playing a guitar to a goat <laughs> enters this side outside and oh, then when you give a second notice they're being told irrational demands oh it's a calling or an essential service is it only essential when i'm offering a service mm. but not essential when right now my members don't have a medical cover because somebody is there with the more lack of it mm -hmm. sat down made the social health act and added a rider that the enhanced scheme for the civil servants has been scrapped then they don't offer a solution until you go to your employer who is the same government to give you an alternative and yet they're the ones who have actually made the decision, the decision of scrapping yes. that at that time they don't take away your medical allowance that they're using it to give you an enhanced cover now right now we don't have a medical cover i have a doctor in, in TRH suffering from lung cancer we had to fundraise on sunday a surgeon in Kericho, liver cancer we had to fundraise this year alone i've lost four young doctors to suicide because of the mess that they're being put through by this country in ku TRH, i have consultants being put on one month contracts three week contracts so things are bad the frog is telling you that the alligator has a cough <laughs> please believe me <laughs> Like Dari, when you looked at this yeah. data during these negotiations and you were looking at um, the payroll yes. for health workers in these counties, from what you know, how many doctors work are employed by the counties and what did you see? The number of doctors that we saw on that payroll was around 5,000. But this is because we are, we are analyzing 2017, 2021 data only. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so probably it's been higher from 2021 up now. But I know that in the registrar in uh, in the KPDC, we have around 15,000 registered doctors. But remember that some of these are have, have gone yeah, abroad, yeah. Mm -hmm. some left, so some are not even. But, in, they're, but they're still some are not private. Practicing. Yes, yeah, some, some are, are in private, private sector and all that. So actually, you can end up maybe around five, six thousand doctors in public health facilities. Yeah, and sometimes I we feel as a union that 
there is an intentional plan to collapse public health care system in this country. Why? Because everybody knows what's wrong. The Chan document, the latest document was uh, analysis of the facilities in this country. So launched like two, three months ago. Mm. And they saw that... It was last month. Yes, that there's no single public facility that meets the staffing norms that the ministry itself has said that a level four should have 50 medical officers, X number of nurses and all that. They don't have that. Yeah. Then if you know that's a problem, you have done everything else except fix the problem. Then right now there are studies that have been shown that Kenya has right now then been pushed intentionally to go to private hospitals. Mm. Because public hospitals are no longer working. You go there after waiting for so long to see a doctor. Then finally you see the doctor, then they send you to the laboratory where there's no equipment. Mm -hmm. You have to go outside. You come back with the results. Then they tell you now, go buy the drug because you don't have the drug. All this time, this coffee farmer in Embu has faithfully paid the NHF. Mm. Or compulsorily been forced to pay the chief. Mm. You get that? Mm. Then th this mother decides that next time I fall sick, I will not waste my time. Queuing at this. Mm. Yeah, go to religious level um. four. I just go to a private hospital directly. Once. You go to private hospitals, of course. Rupa, I tell you that their money capitalization has not been given to them. Six billion what? Yeah. They have seen patients. Nobody has these are business people. In private now it's business. Yeah. Mm. They tell them you're not you have not you're not going to send them that money. They then end up being forced to leave forget about the GST private hospitals in town that you can talk about. They have to sell this cow that they are milking. Yeah. They have to send this land that they're tilling to go to for a private for poor people. The machinery mean clinics in the estates yeah. and the villages. Yeah. Because now they can't afford the high end private. They go to for the private for the poor. Mm. Who over there, apart from serious hotel facilities with the chicken in the diet, there's nothing. Because there's one doctor who owns it, or one nurse, or the nursing home is everything. He's a surgeon, he's a manager, he's an accountant. Because <laughs> the chef can't allow him even to employ anybody. So we must know that when somebody opens a private clinic, you cannot control for them the cost. That's how it drives the cost of care up. Yeah. This guy opened this for business. A butcher opens a butcher because they want to make money, not because they love you. You get that? So for oh, us to drive it. the yes, <laughs> for to bring down the cost of care, this you see they talk about. We have to find ways of driving the patients back from private to public, public hospitals, which they don't want to allow that. Mm -hmm. Some of the big boys in this town are those who own those private hospitals. So it makes sense for them to collapse the public health care system to make private work and how to challenge Kenyans. It's good to have a nice road. Mm. But when it is bad, I see you guys planting maize and trees on the road. Yeah. It's good to have education. When a child fails, they can always repeat. Mm. And I see you guys chasing headmasters and carrying twigs when schools fail. Mm. I'm yet to see a single day that Kenyans will say that this child did not have to die at age five because there are no drugs in the hospital. Mm. I'm yet to see Kenyans carry twigs because this man did not have to die because there was no equipment. Yeah? They just say that God has plucked the best from the garden we meet in heaven. But this same God cannot be allowing children to die at five in Kenya mm. and Japanese to live at 100 to 100. <laughs> not the God that I worship. Mm. So we must hold our politicians accountable that healthcare is devolved yes but we voted for our president we have a government and they gave promises no manifesto Twenty thousand healthcare workers to be employed by kenya kwanza we are shocked how many are they employed Hundred thousand chps community health promoters who have zero medical training the only thing they have is a nose to breathe and legs to walk probably so you are then being told that we have hundred thousand chps in the villages and they are, they are very nice machines to test for BP, test for sugars. But after you create this need and tell this mother that they're hypertensive. Where, did, where does she go? Exactly. They go to the hospital where there's no nurse, no doctor, no drug. So you have left this one more stressed than she was. She's hypertensive with plus more stress. So, that's, uh, that's, yes. so her condition is going to get worse. Get worse. You tell this one that, ah, mama, I suspect you have maybe cancer or something. Go get wow. tested. Then they go, there's no pop smear for this man, woman to be screened. So she's going down with fear of the unknown. In fact, there's a study by National Cancer Institute that says that patients no longer present with stage 4 cancer because they don't know. Mm. Every young woman knows about pap smears. Mm. Every young woman knows about it's even this screening. Yes, they're all educated. Kibaki gave us free education. We are now in Latin. The challenge causing this stage for cancer is that there are no screening services. This woman keeps on going to this dispensary where the nurse is on leave. She's not there. Then she goes to a center where there's no doctor. She's being told you have a UTI, antibiotics upon antibiotics. 
by the time she finally lands in the hands of a gynecologist or a medical officer, she's in stage four. The kidneys are unlocked. More expensive to treat, but more importantly, a life loss unnecessarily. Nine of them die every day from cervical cancer. Something that if we only had healthcare workers in facilities the way it's supposed to be, we'd save lives. Meaning the screening would enable you to understand that the disease exists yes. and appropriate measure would have been taken at an early stage. Thank you. Mm. Dr. Ari, yes. since you issued your tri strike notice, that's what, 12 days ago? No, we gave it this day, the sixth day. The sixth day, yes. the seven day strike notice, yes. yeah. Have you had any meeting with the Ministry of Health? Yes, we... Or with the Council of Governors, the Committee on Health? Council of Governors have not met us because for them, now they feel very nice that MOH is carrying that. Ah, this, is a, this is an internship yes. issue, it's yes. MOH. All, these, this, all the issues they're raising will keep off. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we've been able to meet uh, Minister of Health twice, but as my chairman says, that there will be more of guidance and counseling sessions. We are being told to wait. There's no money. There's no single concrete thing we have been offered. What's the What's the latest meeting you've held with the ministry? It was yesterday morning, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very very disappointing meeting because we were called for a meeting. And we thought that we were going to have the CS in, ch in the meeting. But we arrived to a meeting that the PS was present. Mm -hmm. We were told that the CS had planned for another meeting again with another group of people. Mm -hmm. So we don't know that who is making decisions in so the Ministry of Health. What conversation did you have with the accounting officer? The they PS. told us that there's no money that we should understand and give them some time. And we asked them that we've been understanding for the last one year. Mm -hmm. We have been in negotiations and mediation concrete? for were one there, year. Were there dates? Did you did they say all right? So today is the eleventh of March. There's no time. We don't have money in our accounts. If you give us until the thirtieth of March or fourteenth of April, what? there was no no offer, no timelines, no nothing. We just told that please call off the strike and give us time. Time that we have given for the last seven years. The CBA is seven year old. Mm. Yeah. Who was in attendance from your side? I was there. The chairman was there, mm -hmm. and our executive council members and our legal officer. Okay. Yes. From the government side, everybody that is to be there from the ministry, sadly, the PS and the deputy director general, mm -hmm. director administration, mm -hmm. and the act, somebody was acting for the DG director general mm -hmm. and other heads, the directorates. So senior directorate mem officials were there, mm -hmm. and the accounting officer, the principal secretary, was present. Yes. And the conversation here is about posting of interns. Plus other issues that have Plus arisen. Plus the other now. issues yeah. that have arisen. Yes. But the main one is, the, post the, interns, is the, post yes. the posting of interns. Which Again, the main issue, we are even able to tell them that we have reduced, all, we have all these demand issues. Mm. But we are willing to let some of them be prorated and sorted out later. Mm. But please, post the interns. Okay. There are these specialists who are in school who are working and studying. They have exams coming up. They've yeah. been locked from exams. And the government sponsored. Please, pay if you can't pay their fees, then write for University of Nairobi. They are this government to government. Yeah. Just like that, these are our sponsors. The students will pay later. We are committing, committing to pay. Committing to pay. Okay. We told them that we have medical cover that we don't have. People are dying. Mm. We have interns going to the hospitals if you post them, that is, yeah. without a medical cover. Get us a medical cover. And finally, we told them that there's a big sick salary that we have all agreed. And it's seven years late. It's a court order. Yeah. We are in contempt of court. Kindly find a way of telling us. Don't even pay us all the money in the bank. But tell us that from this day, we'll pay you in this manner. Give us a payment okay. plan. Yeah, I'm a payment plan. Okay. Is that so much to ask for? What did they respond to? This one specifically, what did they say? They said, our hands are tied. We can't commit anything. Why? I don't know. But the commitment already exists. Did they explain why this money is not in the budget? I don't think they're going to own up that they forgot to defend a budget. Okay. There's a supplementary budget that should be coming. Supplementary yes. two should be coming to Parliament. Yes. We're in March. So yes. maybe by April it should yeah. be coming. Yeah. There, was there any conversation or any like pledge like, okay, we are going to really campaign to the National Treasury to add this money into the supplementary budget so that the money can come out at least by end of April, May, early June. You know, Eric... As Anything I, like that? When I began, I said that the biggest problem in all this is lack of leadership in the Ministry of Health. There's nobody just sitting down to say that, can we think out of what we can solve? Because, for example, if you know, how can you meet the peers, like what happened last week, Monday? Then I leave the meeting. We have been told that she's going to be briefed on the meeting. Outside the entrance, I find the CS addressing media without being briefed. About what? I don't know. <laughs> 
We had a, we just finished a meeting that she's not informed of. How can we meet yesterday? Uh, appears discussing internship issue. Then the CS is meeting some interns in the afternoon, without being briefed on what we discuss in the morning. So do you think with that kind of leadership, we are going to engage in a moment that even to discuss about supplementary or even anything worthwhile? I'm a, bit lo- I'm a bit lost here. You say the CS was meeting with interns. Yes. Why? I don't know because and, and the who are the, under and, the union. And who they just maybe just politics or divide and rule. So they were talking to the union because you know there are CBN structures. Get this naive ch- young people who don't know anything and just <laughs> give them stories and a photo opportunity and say that you are doing something. So CS is doing this, PS is doing this, and then you're like, what's going on here? Why can't we just have one meeting? Put COG, PSC, SRC. All the players, mm. we have one meeting and say that, hey, what are the issues here? Tick, tick, tick. What can we do? This, this, this. What can we do? Then we freeze it to four concrete plans and we save Kenya's this tragedy. Because as unions, as doctors, mm. we do not enjoy going on strike. But let me ask we don't you. enjoy going to the streets. The only thing we trained for was mm. to save lives. Sure. But we are being forced every day to go picket on the streets, to abandon our patients, because the only thing a difficult employer understands, the only thing a belligerent employer understands is withdrawal of labor, because that's the only power that unions have. We don't have guns, we don't have anything to withdraw, to withhold salaries or transfer people, demote them. We only have our skills and labor to withhold and use to begin. So now that's interesting because a former um, um, SG of the same union told us that, I mean, this is interesting because mm-hmm. can you imagine that in the same pe- in almost the same period, mm-hmm. we're talking to another SG mm-hmm. and also another deputy who's telling us the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But the language is that the language of strikes is very well understood by those who sit in a position to do something about it. Yeah. And it would appear that from what you're saying, based on the conversations that you have or had not have not had, or any kind of resolution that's being or that's being given or not, that it would appear as though the only language that will be understood at this moment is that of a strike. Yes, because I said again, a strike is not a, a sign of a broken negotiation. It's the cornerstone upon which collective bargaining begins. That you are able to bring this stubborn employer on the table. Because they need you to continue working and you need them to sort your issues. Then finally, agree. Even if they want to implement it, like in 2013, they did a CBA and refused to implement. 2017, another CBA that refused to implement. We still continue in good faith, trusting that as long as we are talking and bargaining and agreeing, we cannot come with something that averts all these problems. And it is here where to carry on, made a declaration as healthcare workers that we will not go and strike again for the next one year plus. But promise us that you're going to do this, this, this. And they signed, media rolling. That we'll do it. Cameras rolling. Up to date. Even things as basic as medical covers that they are already having our monies. They don't. Even the money that they collected in NJF, they don't pay the hospitals. Okay. The rural hospitals have refused to see patients now. Dr. Chari, as we, cl- as we conclude, Thursday is coming. Yes. What will avert this strike? The government will avert this strike by themselves getting out of the strike. The government is done on strike. As a union, we're just joining them on strike. Let them do their job. Patients don't have to die. Patients don't have to suffer. Because either way, our members are going to go on strike because they cannot wait anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that patient's life is more important than the doctors who are dying also from the same illnesses. Because we're all human beings. We come from the same communities. We fall sick the same way as everybody else. Mm-hmm. So please, I want to beg the government, care for the carers too. Why? Dr. Dennis Miskella is the Deputy Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentists Union. Doctors are going on strike on Thursday. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.